Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're doing well. This is Jack from Biprogrammers.com and welcome back to a brand new episode of Let's Code React Native. In this episode, we are going to build a beautiful travel app based on the design created by Michael on Drupal.com. Frankly speaking, this project is quite interesting because it involved quite a bit of animations over here. And in the second screen, we have swipe up for details, which will then sort of like navigate to a screen with clickable markers on the map itself. Just so you know, the full source code for this episode is now available on shop.byprogrammers.com for just a few dollars, so be sure to check that out as well. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification for more videos like this. Alright, now with that being said, let's get started. Just like the previous episode, instead of just setting the project from scratch, we have actually prepared a star template so that it will be a lot easier for you guys to follow along. So head over to the episode 11 star template. The link is in the description below. So um, download the source code and you should be able to see this. The first thing you need to do is to open up your terminal and run npm install. Next, you will need to cd into iOS and run pod install. You can actually skip this step if you're running on Android, alright? So, um, pod install. Okay, now you can cd back to your root folder and run React Native run iOS. If you want to run on Android, you can simply change it to Android. But in this case, we are going to run it on iOS. Like that. Alright, so as you can see, this is actually our star template. There is nothing much you can do. You can navigate between these tabs. Alright, and you can navigate to play screen. That's all. So before we jump right into coding, I am going to take a minute or two to quickly explain the folder structure that we have over here. First thing first, we have the assets folder, which includes the fonts that we'll be using in this project. Um, it's actually Roboto font. And next, we have all the icons that we'll be using and also the images that we'll be using in this project. Next, we have the constants folder. So inside the constants folder, we have dummy.js which includes all the dummy data that we'll be using in this project, all right? So as you can see here, we have an array of countries. So here, this is Malaysia, and we have um, India and also Indonesia. This is actually to render um, this flat list over here. So within this, each of this, country object we have you know the details image and also places um places array right which will be rendered in the second flat list over here and within the places object we have you know some of the details to be rendered in the second screen over here and also um hotels object right these hotel objects will be used to render the clickable markers in the third and final screen over here. Okay, so after the dummy.js, we have the icons, you know, here we are referencing all the icons so that it's easier to be used in the project later on. Same thing goes for images, okay. And also we have team.js. Here we have, you know, defined the dimensions. We have defined the colors, sizes, and also the fonts that we'll be using in the project later on. And lastly, we'll need to export all of them in the index.js file. All right, so that's all for constants. Next thing we have here is the navigation folder. This is actually quite straightforward, which is why we have also included in the star template as well. First of all, we will need to initialize the um, bottom tab navigator from React navigation slash bottom tabs. And from there, we can actually style the navigator or the bottom tab navigator to be more specific into you know black color we have set the height so that this is what we can achieve right and within the navigator component we have four screen components so we have dashboard we have bookmark we have calendar and also we have plane however all these um, four screens or four tabs are actually pointing to the same component which is dashboard this is so that we will not overcomplicate this tutorial all right 
and each of these screens we have included the options prop and within the options prop we have included the tab bar property so that we can customize the tab bar icon over here so as you can see here within the tab bar icon we have rendered the view followed by the image component and we will change the tint color of the icon to blue whenever it is being focused and if it's not being focused, we'll change it to gray. Well, um, pretty much that's all about navigation. Pretty straightforward. All right, so next we'll head over to the screens folder. So within the screens folder, we have dashboard.js, which is a very basic functional component that will render a text and also a button to navigate to the place screen, which is this functional component over here. And lastly, we will also need to export these two screens in the index.js file. All right, and last but not least, we have the styles folder. And within the styles folder, we have something what we call mapstyle.js. We are going to use these array of objects to style our map to look like this later on. All right, so don't worry about this. I'm going to show you how I generate these properties later on. Okay, so that's all for the folder structure explanation. Next, we'll jump right into coding. The first screen that we'll be working on is the dashboard screen. And as usual, I'll first import the components that I'll be using later on. So I need view, I need text, I need image, I need save area view, I need touchable opacity, I need um, animated, because these two flat lists actually involve animations, sorry. Right? And next we have scroll view, and lastly, we have the platform. I mean, we need the platform component, all right? So after this, we need to import from constants. So import from constants. We need um, dummy data. We need colors. We need sizes. We need fonts. We need icons and also images, all right? Okay, so the first component that we'll be working on is the header component. Let me open this up. Okay, much better. So for the header component, we'll need to render three things. The first one on the left will be the side menu button, then followed by a label or a text component. And lastly is the profile button, all right? So we are going to wrap the whole thing within a safe area view like that. And we will give it some styling. So the flags should be one and the background color should be black. Okay, and within the safe area view, we are going to create a function called render header. Okay, and we are going to create a function over here. Function render header return something, right? So here we are going to render a um, container view, give it some styling. Flex direction should be row. Oops. Padding horizontal equals to sizes.padding. Padding vertical equals to sizes.base. And align item should be center. The first component we have here is the site, um, site drawer button, right? So um, we have site drawer over here, then followed by the label or title over here and lastly is the profile right so for the site drawer we need a touchable opacity give it some styling with 45 height 45 align item center and justify content center as well and whenever I click on this button, I am going to console log site drawer. Okay. So within this touchable opacity, we will render an image. The source is going to be icons.site drawer. Resize mode equals to contain. And style will be with 25 sorry height 25 and tint color equals to colors.white all right cool 
Next, we'll need to render the title, right? So over here, we will render a container view, give it some styling, flex equals to one, align item center, and justify content center as well. And within this container view, we will render the text component. So the title is going to be Asia, right? So style is going to be color dot um, color equals to colors dot white. And the font style is going to be fonts dot h3. Perfect. Don't worry about the alignment for now. It will be fixed once we added the profile component, right? So for the profile, we need a touch opacity as well. So touch opacity. And whenever I click on the profile, I am going to console log the word profile. Okay. And within this touch opacity, we will render an image. And the source is going to be images.profilepick. Okay, resize mode is going to be contain. And style is going to be width 45 height 45 and border radius equals to 30. Cool. All right, so after the header component, next we'll be working on the um, country flat list. All right, and these two flat lists will be placed in a scroll view. Okay, so right underneath the render header function over here, we are going to create a scroll view. All right with a sum styling so content container style equals to padding bottom if the platform is ios i will give it 40 if it's not i'll give it zero this is so that the content of the scroll view will not be blocked by the bottom tab navigator over here so within the scroll view we will have a container view with a fixed height of 700 and within this container view we can then render the um, countries flat list and also the places flat list which is these two flat lists over here okay so for the countries i'm going to create a new function called render countries And I'm going to create a function over here. Now, before we can work on the country's flat list, we need to set up a couple of things over here. So here, we need to first import the use state and use ref um, hook, all right? Like that. And here, we need to set up the react state hook for um, country list, all right? So constant countries set countries equals to use state dummy data dot countries. And because we'll need to achieve this result, as in the selected country will always be in the middle, we will need to prepend and append empty object into this um, React state hook. So this is what we can do. We can give it. Um, the square bracket fish and we are going to prepend an empty object into this react state hook like that id will be negative one and we are going to use the spread operator over here and lastly we are going to append another empty object over here id equals to negative two just like that other than that we will also need to keep track of the animated value of um, country flat list scroll position. This is so that we can work in the animations later on. Okay, so constant country scroll x equals to we're going to use the use ref react hook new animated value sorry animated dot value initial value will be zero and here we need to use the dot current like that. And lastly, we need to set up the constant variable for the country's item size or item width. Okay. 
So constant countries item size equals to sizes dot width divided by three. So now we can head back to the render countries function over here and we are going to return an animated flat list. So animated dot flat list. It should be horizontal. Padging should be enabled. Snap to alignment should be centered. Snap to interval should be equals to the country's item size. Shows horizontal scroll indicator should be false. Scroll event throttle should be equals to 16. Deceleration rate equals to 0. Data should be countries. The key extractor should be the ID. Okay. So item item dot id like that we need the on scroll props as well like i mentioned earlier this is to keep track of the scroll position for us to do the animations later on okay so it goes to animated dot event native event content offset x country scroll x and here we need to set the use native driver equals to false all right and lastly we'll need the render item props so render item equals to item index arrow function and here we are going to return some element oh, sorry some components let me first try to return the country name and see how it goes Oops, the text should be in white color. Alright, cool, it's working. Malaysia, India, and Indonesia are all being shown in this flat list. Alright, so next we'll need to use the interpolate function to animate the opacity, map size, as well as text size or font size whenever a country is being selected. Alright, so here it will be constant opacity equals to country scroll x dot interpolate input range should be index minus two times country's item size index minus one times country's item size and index times country's item size and the output range should be 0 0.3 1 and 0 0.3 and the extra plate should be clean next will be the map size so constant map size equals to country scroll x dot interpolate input range should be the same as the opacity so i'm gonna just copy and paste it from here okay and the output range should be output range should be 25 if the platform is ios It's going to be 80 if it's not it's going to be 60 and lastly followed by 25 and the extrapolate should be claim and lastly will be the font size so constant font size equals to country scroll x dot interpolate and input range and the input range is the same so i'm going to just paste it here and the output range will be 15 25 and 15. extrapolate same thing will be claim all right so here if 
it's the first item or if it's the last item don't forget we have um, prepend and append empty object into the country's um, state right so if it's the first item and the last item we are going to return an empty view with the width of countries item size and if it's not I am going to return something else over here right as you can see it is now being aligned to the center because we have set up the width for the um, empty objects over here and here all right so now because we need to animate this whole thing right we need to animate the size of the map this the size of the font and also the opacity we need to use animated dot view all right so the opacity should be it goes to the opacity that we have set up over here okay so opacity equals to opacity style will be height 130 width equals to countries item size the constant that we have um, initialized just now align item should be center justify content should be center as well and within this view we need to render an animated image where the source is going to be item.image resize mode will be contain and style will be with equals to map size which is the one we have set up over here okay and the height should be equals to map size as well tint color should be white okay let me save it all right cool so we have malaysia over here india and also indonesia over here cool after the image we will need to render the text over here okay so it's going to be animated dot text we are going to render the item name like this and we need to give it some styling so margin top equals to side sorry equals to tree color equals to colors dot um, colors dot white and the font is going to be font dot h1 and lastly the font size is going to be the font size that we have set up over here okay save it perfect so we have Malaysia we have India and also we have Indonesia and the animations are working fine as well cool all right so that's all for the countries flat list next we'll be working on the places flat list okay so to do that come over here we will render a container view give it some styling the height if the platform is ios then the height it's going to be 500 if it's not it's going to be 450 so within this container view we are going to render a function called render places and we are going to create this function over here return something okay now before we can work in the places flat list same thing we need to um, set up a couple of things over here the first thing we need to initialize is the list of places right so over here places set places we are going to use the react state hook so use state and the initial value is going to be dummy data dot countries 
first object in the country to be more precise, dot places. Like that. And same thing as the country flat list. For the places flat list, we would like to achieve the similar result, which means the selected place will always be in the middle. Alright, so to do this, same thing, we need to wrap this whole thing within a square bracket. Like that. And we will need to prepend and append empty objects in this react state hook. Alright, so over here it will be um, id equals to negative one. And for the dummy data, we will be using the spread operator like this. And we will append another empty object with the id of negative two, like that. And over here, we need two more constants variable. Okay, so the first constant variable is going to be places item size, which is actually the places with this part over here. So places item size equals to if the platform is iOS, it's going to be sizes.width divided by 1.25. If it's not, it's going to be sizes.width divided by 1.2. And we need another constant variable called empty item size. This is basically the width for these two empty objects over here. Okay, so empty item size equals to sizes.width minus places item size divided by 2. Just like that. And don't forget, we'll need to set up the animated value for the places flat list as well. This is for us to capture the scroll position to work on the animations later on. Okay, so over here, it's going to be constant places scroll x equals to use ref, same thing, new animated dot value, initial value is going to be zero and dot current like that. Now we can then head back to the render places function and over here we are going to return an animated flat list right so it, it has to be horizontal padging has to be enabled shows horizontal scroll indicator should be false data should be places the key extractor should be item.id so it's going to be like this item.id and the content container style it's going to be align item equals to center and snap to alignment equals to center as well snap to interval now, if it's um, if the platform is equals to iOS, then it's going to be places underscore item underscore size plus twenty eight. If it's not, then it will be places underscore item underscore sizes. Sorry, size. And the scroll event throttle should be sixteen. Deceleration rate should be zero. Bounces should be equals to false. And same thing, we need the on scroll prop to capture the scroll position, right? So animated.event native event content offset x places scroll x like that and over here we need to specify that the use native driver equals to false and lastly will be the render item props so item index arrow function and here i'm just going to return the places name and see if it works so um it's going to be view and text so within this text component, I will render the item.name. 
and of course the color has to be white Let's see if it works all right cool so within malaysia we have kuching my hometown kuala lumpur and penang we won't be able to change the places for now don't worry we'll work on that later on all right so same thing within the render item prop we'll be working on the animations by using the interpolate function okay so just like that constant opacity equals to places scroll x dot interpolate and the input range equals to index minus two times places underscore item underscore size index minus one times places underscore item underscore size and index times places underscore item underscore size as well and the output range will be 0 0.31 and 0 0.3 and, and lastly the extrapolate should be claim all right so after the opacity we'll work on the height of the place um, item okay so over here we will need to first calculate the active height all right because different device renders it differently so if the platform equals to ios and if the sizes dot height is more than 800 the active height is going to be sizes dot height divided by two if it's less than or equals to 800 the active height is equals to sizes dot height divided by 1.65 and if it's android the active height will be sizes dot height divided by 1.6 okay so over here we will use the interpolate function okay so constant height equals to places scroll x dot interpolate for the input range it's the same so i'm gonna just copy and paste it from here and for the output range it's going to be sizes dot height divided by 2.25 active height which is the one we have calculated over here and also followed by sizes dot height divided by 2.25 okay and the extrapolate equals to claim okay so same thing if it's the first or the last item which is basically the empty objects that we have included previously okay so if it's the first and the last item I will return an empty view with a width of empty item empty item size like that if it's not then i'll return something else right okay so over here we will wrap it within an animated.view component okay like that and the opacity equals to the opacity that we have set up over here and the style is going to be with places underscore item size height equals to height the one that we have initialized over here align item equals to center 
border radius equals to 20 and padding equals to 10. So within this view container, we are going to render an image where the source is going to be item.image resize mode is going to be cover and style is going to be position absolute width equals to 100% height equals to 100% and border radius equals to 20 I think something is wrong with this um, constant variable. Let's see what I wrote here. Okay, it says, ah, okay, it's item size. It's empty item size. Over here, there's a bit of typo. Two typos, actually. Okay, we should be fine now. All right, cool. So render places over here. All right, so we have successfully rendered the places image over here. We'll fix this part later on. Okay, so next we'll need to render the places name and also description and followed by the explore button. Okay, so underneath the image component, we will render a container view. Give it some styling. So flex should be one and align items should be center. Justify content should be flex and and margin horizontal equals to sizes that padding. Okay, and within this container view, we will render the text component and we are going to render item dot name. Give it some styling. So margin bottom equals to sizes dot radius, color equals to white, and the font is going to be H1. Okay, and next we need another text component to render the description. Okay, so over here item item dot description. Give it some styling, margin bottom equals to sizes dot padding times two, text align equals to center, color equals to white, and the font is going to be body tree. Perfect. All right, and the last component is the text button over here. As you can see, this explore button is actually very similar to this details button over here, which means we can actually create a standalone component for this button and reuse it in the map screen over here. Okay, so I'm going to create a folder called components like that. And within the components folder, I am going to create a text button JS file. So same thing, I'm going to re import React. I'm going to import from React Native. I need text and I need touchable opacity. And I need to import from constants as well. So from constants, I need colors. I need sizes and I need fonts. Next, we'll create the functional component called text button like that. Arrow function return something. And don't forget we need to export default text button as well. For this component, we will tag in four different props, which are label, custom container style, custom label style, and lastly, the unpress function. Okay, and here we are going to return the touchable opacity. Okay, 
give it some styling the height equals to 55 align item center justify content center border radius equals to sizes dot radius background color equals to colors dot white and lastly we will include the custom container style as well custom container style like that and for the on press it's going to be on press and within this touchable opacity we'll render the text label give it some styling so the fonts is going to be h2 and we will include the custom label style as well like that all right so that's all for the text button component we will need to create a, an index file over here index.js import the text button over here like that and export the text button now we can then import it in our dashboard.js file okay so over here we will import from components right we will import the text button and now we can go back to the render places function underneath the um, text component we can then render the text button component like that so the label is going to be explore and the custom container style is going to be position absolute bottom equals to negative 20 and width equals to 150 save it all right so we have the text button component rendered over here just that we need to work on the item height a little bit okay i think there should be some mistakes when we were calculating the active height over here no here this one right some type over here there you go it works now perfectly fine the animations is working nicely as well cool okay so what we need to do next is that whenever we scroll through this um, country we need to be able to change these places accordingly as well right so to do that we will head over to the render countries function and over here underneath the on scroll props we will use a new prop called on momentum scroll n with this Okay, let me supply the parameter first event arrow function so with this we can actually calculate the um, scroll ending position right so position oops sorry so var position equals to event dot native event dot content offset dot x divided by countries item size dot to fix zero with this we can actually calculate the current position okay so this is to calculate position once we got the position we can then set the place right like this set places same thing we need to append sorry prepend and append the empty objects as well so like that we'll use the spread operator over here dummy data dot countries and the index will be position dot places and we will append it with another empty object like this now save it let me refresh the app as well okay so it will first render the different places in malaysia and if we scroll the country flat list 
it should refresh the places flat list as well like this right so this is India and this is Indonesia perfect all right so the next thing we need to do is to make sure this button over here the explore button allow us to capture the current selected um, place and navigate to the second screen over here right so to do that the first thing we need is to create a new react state hook to capture the um, places scroll position all right so over here constant we have places scroll position set places scroll position equals to use state and the initial value is going to be zero then we can navigate to the render places function and within this animated flat list underneath the on scroll prop we will add in a new prop called on momentum scroll n okay same thing event arrow function and over here we will calculate the position just like how we did it just now okay calculate the position and we will set the place position place scroll position actually okay so over here var position equals to event.native event.content offset dot x divided by places underscore item underscore size dot to fix zero and with this position we can then set the reset hook so set places scroll position position like that now for the explore text button over here I will supply the unpressed props like that which will then call another function called explore button handler and we will create this function directly on top of the render places function over here function explore button handler and within this function we will need to get the places current index the currently selected index okay and we need to navigate to the next screen over here so over here constant current index equals to i'll need to parse it so parse in places scroll position which is the one that we have set earlier and we need to supply the radix parameter of 10 and plus one so once we got the current index we can then navigate to the place um, screen right so navigation dot navigate place and we will pass in the selected place as param as well so selected place places current index just like that just to make sure we are passing the correct object i am going to console log over here as well okay so whenever i click on the explore button oops um some typo places item score sizes let me see okay need to get rid of this s over here okay so whenever i click on the explore button the selected place will be passed over to the place screen all right so let me try another country um indonesia bali there you go as you can see here bali is being passed over to the place screen let's try another country india so let's try agra and yep it works over here okay all right so that's all for the dashboard next we'll be working on the place screen right so head over to the place.js file 
and here I'm going to import a couple more things um, I need image background I need image and later I might need the animated as well okay and I'm going to import from constants so from constants I need colors sizes fonts and icons all right so what we need to do next is that we need to use the use effect hook to you know retrieve the parameter which is this one over here selected place and store it into use state hook in the place.js file okay so over here react.use effect like that oh and over here we need to include the route as well and perhaps navigation also okay and within the use effect hook we will get the selected place from route.params and here I need to set up the use state hook so constant selected place set selected place equals to react.use state and the initial value is now so over here I can then set selected place equals to selected place so um, next within this container view I am going to render a function called render place and I'm going to create this function over here and within the render place function the first thing we have here is the image background right so I'm going to return image background sorry like that and the source is going to be selected place dot image and style is going to be with 100% and height 100% as well perfect let me try the other one cool all right so next we have the header bar component now if you pay attention to this header bar it's actually very very similar to this one over here which means we can then create a standalone component for the header bar section right so over here i'm going to create a new component called header bar same thing i'm going to import from react i am going to import a couple of components from react native so i need view i need text i need touchable opacity and i need image so after this we need to import from constants as well like that we need colors sizes fonts and icons then we can create the header bar functional component so constant header bar equals to sorry arrow function return something and of course don't forget to export the header bar as well so export default header bar so for the header bar component we need a few props over here so i need title left on press which means the um, left button on press method all right so left on press right and container style so now for this view i'm going to give it some styling so style it goes to flex direction it goes to row padding horizontal it goes to sizes that padding and we will include the container style as well so within this view we will have three different sections right so we have back button we have the um, title and lastly we have the settings button okay so we have the back button we have title and we have settings button so for the back button i'm going to create a view with a bit of styling 
style equals to align items flex start and within this view we will create a touchable opacity give it some styling as well align items equals to center justify content equals to center width equals to 50 height equals to 50 border radius equals to 25 and background color equals to colors dot transparent black and on press equals to left on press okay now within this touchable opacity we need an image and the source is going to be icons dot left arrow resize mode is going to be content and style is going to be width 20 height 20 and tint color it goes to colors dot white okay so next will be the title section so over here I'll create another view as well give it some styling so flex equals to 1 align items equals to center and justify content equals to center as well and within this view we will have a text component like that and we will render title give it some styling so color equals to colors dot white and the font will be fonts dot hedge street and lastly for the settings button I will also create a touchable opacity and the style is going to be width 50 height 50 border radius equals to 25 align item equals to center justify content equals to center as well and for the background color if the right prop equals to true then i will render colors dot transparent black if it's not then it's going to be now and within this touchable opacity if the right props is equals to true then i will render this image all right so image source equals to icons dot settings resize mode equals to contain and style is equals to width 20 height 20 and tint color equals to colors dot white okay so all i need to do next is to include the header bar in the index.js file like this so i'm gonna copy and change the text button to header bar and i'm going to export it over here so now we can go back to the place.js file and over here we will import from component okay and we will import header bar so in the render place function within the image background component we will render header bar like that I know that in this screen in the play screen we do not have the title so title we will just leave it blank and left on press which means whenever I click on the back button I will navigate sorry navigation dot go back go back to the previous screen right and for this screen I do not have the right button so right equals to false and container style is equals to margin top sizes dot padding times two all right cool so i can go back and i can navigate back to the play screen as well all right so after the header bar next we'll be working on the detail section over here so we have name we have ratings we have description and also we have 
a um, text icon button over here. So to achieve this, we will first create a container view right underneath the header bar. So view, give it some styling. Flex equals to one. Padding horizontal equals to sizes dot padding. Justify content equals to flex and margin bottom equals to 100. Now within this container view, we will have the name and rating section, which is this part over here, then followed by the description section. And lastly is the text icon button section, right? Let me close the terminal. So for the name and rating section, we will render another container view like that. Give it some styling. Flex direction equals to row. Align items equals to center. Justify content equals to space between. Now inside this container view, we will have a text component that will render the selected place dot name, right? We need to give it some styling. So style equals to color equals to colors dot white. And the font is going to be fonts dot, <coughs> excuse me, large title. There you go. So after the name, we will have another container view for the Ray things, right? So give it some styling as well. Style equals to flex direction equals to row and align items equals to center. Now within this view, we will have a text component that will render selected place dot rate. Don't forget to give it some styling. So margin right equals to five color equals to white and the font is going to be h3 okay so we have the rating being rendered properly over here next we will render the star icon so image and the source is going to be icons dot star and style is going to be width 20 and height 20 all right, so after the name and rating section, next we will render the description. Okay, so over here, we will have a text component that will render selected place dot description. Give it some styling. So style equals to margin top equals to sizes dot base and color equals to white and the font will be fonts.body3. All right, cool. Now we have the description section in place. Next, we'll need to work on the text icon button over here. Now, although this button, this component is not being used in other screens in this project, I am still going to create a standalone component for this um, text icon button. This is so that it will be a lot easier for you to you know, use it in your personal projects if you want to, all right? so. In the components folder, I am going to create a new file called text icon button.js. Same thing, I'm going to import from React. I'm going to import a couple of components from React Native, like that. We need text, we need touchable opacity. And lastly, we need image. After that, we need to import from constants like that. We need to import colors, sizes, and fonts. And here we can then create the functional component called text icon button. Arrow function, and we are going to return something. Don't forget we need to export default text icon button as well. So for this component, we are going to need a few props, which are label, icon, custom container style, custom label style, and 
on press. Now over here we are going to return a touchable opacity. Touchable opacity like that. Give it some styling. So flex direction equals to row. Height equals to 60. Align item center. Justify content center. Border radius equals to sizes.radius. Background color equals to white. And we will include the custom container style as well. Now within this touchable opacity, we will have a text component that will render the label, right? Give it some styling. Margin right equals to sizes.base. And the font will be fonts.h2. And we will include the custom label style as well. Now after the text component, don't forget we need to include the icon as well. So over here, we will render the image component like that. And the source will be icon. Style will be width 25 and height 25. Oh, and don't forget we need to include the unpress um, function as well. So unpress equals to unpress. Alright, so after this, as usual, we will need to include in the index.js file. So I'm gonna just copy and paste it like this, change it to text icon button, and I am going to export it over here. Now we can then go back to the place.js file, and we need to import the text icon button from the components. Then we can include the text icon button over here. So text icon button. The label is going to be book of flight. And the icon will be icons.airplane. Custom container style is going to be margin top sizes.padding. And whenever I click on this button, I will just simply console log book of flight. Just like that. Perfect. All right, so the first part of the play screen is completed. Next, we'll be working on the swipe for details section. What it means is that whenever I swipe up in the place screen, I should be able to see the map screen like this one over here. So in order to achieve this result, we'll be using a library or a plugin called RN sliding up panel. So um, scroll down and open up the docs. Scroll down until you find the npm install over here. So copy, you can use yarn if you want to, and paste it in your terminal. All right, now I'm going to run React Native Link and followed by the pod install in the iOS folder. So pod install. Next, we are going to restart the app like that. CD back to your root folder and run React Native run iOS. All right, so now we can then work on the sliding up panel over here. So first thing we need to do is to import the sliding up panel. So um, import from rn dash sliding up panel like that and here it's going to be sliding up panel next we'll need to use the use ref hook to set up a reference variable for the sliding up panel all right so over here lat underscore panel equals to react dot use ref and the initial value equals to now the reason why we are doing this is so that later on we can control the sliding up panel programmatically, right? Okay, so what we are going to do next is that we need to render a new function over here. So it's called render map, right? And we are going to create the function over here. So function render map, and we are going to return something. So here we will be returning the sliding up panel. We need to 
set out some props so the reference it's equal to c underscore panel equals to c like that we need to set up the reference variable the draggable range should be equals to top equals to sizes dot height plus 120 and bottom equals to 120 show backdrop equals to false snapping points equals to sizes dot height plus 120 and height equals to sizes dot height plus 120 and friction equals to 0 0.7 and within this sliding up panel we are going to create a container view with a bit of styling so style equals to flex equals to 1 and background color equals to transparent now within this view there will mainly be two different sections which are the panel header which is this part over here and followed by the panel detail itself which is the map screen over here so for the panel header we are going to create another view like that give it some styling height equals to 120 background color equals to transparent align item center justify content center and within this view we are going to render an image for the arrow and followed by the text component so over here it will be image the source will be icons.up arrow and the style is going to be width 20 height 20 and tint color equals to colors.white all right cool the arrow is showing over here next we'll need to render the text component so text the text itself will be swipe up sorry swipe for details like that give it some styling so color equals to white and the fonts will be h3 perfect and next for the panel detail section we will first create an empty view and see if it works so um, we will give it a bit of styling so flex equals to one background color we will give it um, white align item center and the justify content should be center as well save it now we should be able to swipe to show the panel detail section like that you see it's working cool okay so for the panel detail section we will need to render a map like this right so in order not to over complicate this tutorial i have already set up the google map for both android and ios in this starter template if you would like to know how we did it you can actually refer to episode 8 or you can refer to the blog post that we have posted on byprogrammers.com if not you can just generate your google map api key by following the steps over here in this blog post all right so once you got the key all you need to do is to paste it in your starter template so for android you will need to paste it in android folder app folder source folder main and android manyface.xml file simply replace this with your api key all right now for ios you will need to do it in the ios folder um, your project folder in the app delegate.am file scroll down and you simply need to replace your um, re sorry replace this with your api key that's all now we can then head back to the place.js file and we need to import from the map so import from react native maps so we need map view we need provider google and marker and next we need to import the map style as well don't worry i'll explain this shortly all right so import from styles 
this one is going to be map style like that. Next, we can then render the map view in the panel details section over here, right? So within this view, we will render the map view like that. We will give it some styling. So style equals to width 100%, height 100%, provider equals to provider Google like that. And the initial region equals to selected place dot map initial region. I am going to save it and see what we got. Okay, I'm going to refresh this. Okay, explore, swipe up. Perfect, the map is now showing. Don't mind the legginess, please, because my um, MacBook is currently running a lot of different programs. That's why it's very, very heavy. So if you run this on your site, or even better, on an actual device, you shouldn't be experiencing this kind of lagginess, all right? So don't worry. Next, what we need to do is that we need to sort of change the appearance of this map to look like this, the one we have in the mock screen, right? So in order to achieve this, we'll be using a service um, designed by Google. It's called mapstyle.withgoogle.com. And from here, you can do all sorts of different customization. You can click on more options. You can, you know, hide certain things. You can change the color of point of interest, stuff like that. And once you're done with that, click on finish button, copy this JSON and paste it in your styles folder. So for this tutorial, I have already set up the map style over here like this. So all I need to do now is to set the custom map style props equals to map style like that perfect all right now that the map is ready next we'll be working on the map markers okay so within the map view component we'll be using the map method to render a list of markers okay so selected place dot hotels dot map hotel index like that arrow function and i'm going to return something over here so um, I'm going to return the marker. The key will be equals to index coordinate equals to hotel dot latitude longitude like that. Identifier equals to hotel ID. And we will supply the unpressed method later on. Now within this marker, I am going to render the image. So image, the source will be icons dot bad off like that. Resize mode equals to contain, and the style will be width fifty and height fifty. Oops, sorry, a bit of typo over here. So. Explore coaching and there you go. The markers are being rendered on the map in accordance to the coordinate. All right. So what we need to do next is that we need to make sure these markers are clickable. So to do that, we need to first um, create a new use state hook called selected hotel. Set selected hotel equals to react .use state and the initial value will be now. All right, so with that, we can then go back to the map view over here. For the marker component, we can supply the unpressed prop equals to arrow function. And whenever the marker is being pressed, we will set the selected hotel to hotel. And over here, if the selected hotel dot id equals to hotel dot id then we will render the icons dot bat on icon if it's not it will be bad off save it now whenever i click on this marker the icon should change to blue there you go so if i click on this it will change to blue as well perfect so next thing we need to do is to include the header bar over here. So to do that, 
right underneath the map view over here we can then render the header component like this so header bar component which is the one we have created earlier the title is going to be selected place dot name and the left arm press which means whenever I click on the back button I would want to hide the panel so I can do it like this panel dot height and here the right equals to true because I want to show the right button so true and the container style is equals to position absolute and top equals to sizes dot padding times two there you go the header bar is showing here I can click on this and whenever I click on the back button it should hide this panel perfect all right so for the last component that we'll be working on for this project is the map footer section which is this part over here so go back to your source code right underneath the header bar component we can then render the hotel details right so like that the first thing we need is a container view so view like that give it some styling the position should be absolute bottom 30 left 0 right 0 and padding should be sizes that radius now within this view the first thing we need to render is this text component over here so we can do that by rendering the text component and we will render hotels in selected place dot name give it some styling so color equals to white and the fonts should be h1 like that all right cool the text is showing next we need to render the details over here right so right underneath the text component we will render another container view like that give it some styling so flex direction equals to row margin top equals to sizes dot radius padding equals to sizes dot radius as well border radius equals to 15 background color equals to colors dot transparent black one now within this container view the first thing we need is the hotel image right so we need the image component over here source will be selected hotel dot image resize mode should be cover style will be width 90 height 120 and border radius equals to 15. all right so we have the hotel image showing up next we'll be working on this part over here okay so right underneath the image component we will create another view give it some styling so flex equals to one margin left equals to sizes dot radius justify content equals to center and within this view we will render the text component and here we will render selected hotel dot name give it some styling so color equals to colors dot white and the font should be fonts dot h3 save it oh a bit of typo over here margin left save it all right so we have rendered the hotel name over here and next we'll need to work on the ratings for this i am going to create a standalone component as well this is so that we will not mess up the code over here okay so i am going to create a new file in the components folder so components a new file called rating.js same thing i'm going to import from react i'm going to import from react native as well i need view 
and I need image, right? After this, I'll import from constants. So here it's going to be icons. And next we can then create the ray thing functional component. Arrow function, turn. And over here, don't forget to export default ray thing. So for this component, we need two props, which are the container style and rate. Now, right before the return statement over here, we will first create an empty array called star components. And then we will use a for loop to populate the star components. All right, so var i equals to zero, i less than rate, i plus plus. So star components dot push I'm going to push an image component like this and the key should be I'm um, sorry I'm going to do it like this full dash dollar sign I source will be icons dot star resize mode will be cover and style will be margin left if the i equals to zero if it's the first um, element or the first component then the margin left will be zero if it's not then will be five width equals to 15 and height equals to 15 as well so once we got that we can then return it over here so first thing we need is the view give it some styling flex direction equals to row and we will include the container style as well. So within this view, we will then render the star components like that. Perfect. Now don't forget we need to include the rating in the index.js file. So I'm gonna just simply copy and paste it like that and change it to rating. And I'm going to export it over here. All right, now we can then go back to the place.js file, make sure to import the rating component. So over here, I'll import the rating. Now we can then use the rating component. So um, over here, right underneath this text component, I will use the rating component. The container style should be margin top equals to sizes.base and the rate should be selected hotel dot rate save it all right cool the rating is showing over here next we'll need to work on the buttons and also this text component over here so right underneath the rating component i am going to render another view like this give it some styling flex direction equals to row and margin top equals to sizes dot base now within this view i am going to render the text button component like that and the label is equals to details custom container style is equals to margin top equals to sizes dot base height equals to 45 and width equals to 100 and the custom label style should be equals to fonts.h3 and whenever I click on this button I will just simply oops I will just simply console lock details like that Oops, I forgot to import text button over here. All right, so make sure to import your text button. Save it. Explore. It's a little bit weird. Let me try to refresh the app. All right, so explore. I'm going to swipe up. Okay, I think I know what's going on. All right, so scroll down. Um... Over here, hotel details, 
we will only render the hotel details if and only if a hotel has been selected. All right, so like this. I'm gonna paste it over here. Save it. Perfect, now whenever I click on a marker or a hotel, it will show up like this, perfect. Okay, so after the details button, we need to render the price. So over here, I will be creating another view like that. Give it some styling. Flex equals to one. Align item equals to flex n. And justify content equals to center. Now within this view, I will be rendering the text component. And here it's going to be from dollar sign selected hotel dot price. Give it some styling. Okay, the color should be colors dot light gray. And the font should be body five. And the font size over here, if the platform is iOS, then the font size should be sizes dot body four. If it's not, then it should be sizes dot body five. Oh, and over here, I need to put per night like that. All right, cool, it works now. Let me try to change to another hotel like this. Perfect. Now, before we end this tutorial, there is one more issue that we need to fix. If you're running this on iOS, you shouldn't have any problem, which means you can view the map however the way you want to, right? However, if you were to run this on Android, you may accidentally close the panel whenever you scroll through the map, which is very, very annoying, right? So in order to fix that, we need to create a couple of things over here. So here, we need to create a new um, React state hook called allow dragging. All right, set allow dragging. It goes to react.useState and the initial value equals to true. And over here, we will create an animated drag value. So constant underscore drag value equals to react. We'll be using the use ref hook. So react.use ref new animated dot value initial value equals to zero dot current like that. So now head over to the render map function over here in the sliding up panel component, I'll be adding a new prop called allow dragging equals to allow dragging. And I'll be creating another, sorry, I'll be supplying another props called animated value equals to underscore drag value like that. We need one more prop and that is called on bottom reach which means whenever the panel is hidden completely or hidden totally we will then set allow dragging to true like that and lastly for the use effect hook over here we need to set up a listener that will disable the panel dragging whenever the map view is shown so to do that, underscore drag value dot add listener value object. Now if the value object dot value is more than the sizes dot height, which means the map view is currently showing, then I will set the allow dragging to false. And over here, don't forget we need to remove the listener as well. So drag value dot remove all listeners like that. Save it. 
Let me try to refresh the app. Well, in fact, for iOS, it should still behave exactly the same. So I'm going to swipe up and over here, I will select a random hotel like that. Okay. And I can, you know, scroll around the map. No problem. I can hit the back button and I can scroll back up. Cool. All right, guys, we have just coded this beautiful travel app based on the design created by Michael on Dribble.com. Now, if you'd like to support our work, the full source code for this project is available for just a few dollars on shop.byprogrammers.com. And I have included a link in the description below. If not, that's totally fine as you can still achieve the same result by getting the starter template for this project and follow along the video. So if you like the video, we'll be more than happy if you can give it a thumbs up, comment, share it to your friends, and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. I will see you guys in the next video. Happy coding. Peace.